Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three good stories. So subscribe, click the like button, and here we go. The first story is, don't want us to do it the right way? Alright, you're the boss. Hello friends, this is a happy little story from my time as a warehouse assistant. Some background first, this happened while working for a small business. The boss in question is actually a great dude, but like all bosses, he's under a ton of stress and has his moments. This particular piece of compliance revolves around a nail gun in use in the warehouse. Don't worry, no idiots were harmed in the writing of this story. So every afternoon we have pretty large shipments getting sent out. Everything sold for the day would be popped onto pallets and shipped off to customers. Now, pallets are surprisingly expensive and if not sized properly cost a fortune extra in freight. So we eventually started making our own in order to fit the size of the products being shipped, using the previously mentioned nail gun to put them together. All was going well until the delivery guy told us that, and I quote, those effing pallets of yours are SH and keep falling apart. Stop using the effing nail gun and put them together properly. We looked into it and he was 100% right. See, the nails from the nail gun were super small, thin, and couldn't grip for SH. The warehouse manager could actually pull the pallets with his hands. So yeah, not good. Twas reported to the admin folks upstairs and the show went on. From that point on we started using normal nails instead. Yeah, it took longer but we were still saving money and the delivery folks were happy as clams. Now for the turn. One Friday late in the afternoon, the boss comes down and lets us know the sales team has just landed a big one. Boss, we need some pallets lads, I want this to ship this afternoon. Grab the nail gun and throw some together ASAP. Me, no problem, I'll get on it now. Boss goes back upstairs and I start belting pallets together using normal nails. Five minutes later, Boss comes back down and he is fuming. Boss, oh see, I can see you on the cameras. What the heck are you doing? Me, hammering the pallets up, Boss, as you said. Boss, I said to use the D nail gun. Me, well I would, but when we used it last time. Boss, no buts. We bought that nail gun. Now you better bloody use it. In fact, I'll show you how. Boss man takes the nail gun and slaps together a pallet in 20 seconds flat. Normally takes about 3 to 4 minutes by hammer. Boss. There. See? Now do it the right way or go home. Me. Yes, boss. And so begins our compliance. I pick up the nail gun and smash out 5 fragile pallets in the space of about 3 minutes. Exactly the same way the boss man did, which I'm okay with. It's a ton easier. All while my co-workers giggled with glee. Come shipping time, I realized just why they were all giggling. All the other forklift users are out for the rest of the afternoon. With local deliveries, sickness and general excuses. The only person with a fork license whom was going to have to load the truck was, you guessed it, Boss Man. So Boss Man picks up the first pallet and is about to load it onto the truck when the pallet is hit by a stray breeze and proceeds to fall apart on the forks. Delivery Guy, the F did I tell you about those pallets? Are you idiots using that nail gun again? Boss stammers, saying we needed them sent this afternoon and the nail gun should have done the job. Delivery Guy, I don't bloody care. I can't take any of the pallets you built with that nail gun. If they fall apart in our possession and damage something or someone, it's a bloody nightmare. Do them again and I'll pick them up tomorrow. And with that parting gift, in his own act of compliance, the delivery driver keeps to his word, closes the truck and drives off without our shipment. The boss sits in silence, contemplating the thousands of dollars in product, which has now experienced a nice big shipping delay. Did I mention this was Friday? Boss. OC? Me. Yeah, boss? Boss. Retire the nail gun. And sorry about earlier. Me. Don't worry about it. Want a hand getting all these back inside? Boss. Yep, and if you've got some time before closing, I would appreciate some fresh pallets as well. Me. On it. I'll have them knocked up in a bit. And the nail gun was never heard from again. Don't you all enjoy a happy ending? The second story is, I know the rules. Do you? A little backstory. This happened years ago while I was working in retail. I had been at this place for three years, was cross-trained in every department, had never had a sick day, and was always available to cover shifts when they called me. The important thing to say is that we were also unionized. I would soon be getting married and moving across the country, so being the good employee I was, I gave my store manager my termination notice a month before my last day, instead of just two weeks, so he would have plenty of time to hire someone new. Here's the good part. A few days after I turned in my notice, I broke my foot in an act of stupidity. Three avulsion fractures, they couldn't cast it. Doctor gave me some pain meds and a note saying I could continue to work as a cashier as long as I had a stool or something, so I could help keep the weight off my foot. The next day I grabbed my cane and walked to work with my note. I explained the situation to my supervisor and union rep and they pull a bar stool from the furniture section and put it in my cash booth. I spend the day working without a problem. The next day my store manager sees me sitting on the stool and calls me into his office. 
I go in and he wants to know why I have a stool. The versation goes roughly as follows. Manager, why are you sitting down while on shift? Me, because I broke my foot and the doctor says I can't be standing on it all day. I have the note in the union's approval. Manager looks over the note and notices the cane beside my chair. Manager, I can't let you keep the stool. If I did, we would have to make accommodations for everyone who got injured outside of working hours. Plus, it doesn't look professional to have you sitting at the front of the store. Now, I know he isn't allowed to do that and that I could have taken this up with the union and won the case, but with only three weeks left with the company, I would be lucky to have it resolved before I left. So I get a bright idea. Me, okay, I'll make you a deal instead of bringing this to the union. I will give up the stool, but in return, you need to make sure that every shift I work from now on is as the garden center cashier. My manager quickly agrees and thanks me for being understanding. He walks with me out to the garden center and explains to the current cashier that I'll be taking over for the rest of the month. Now, being unionized is not always a great thing, but if you know the rules, you can get away with a lot without being fired. With my union, the key was to do exactly what was in your job description, so long as it didn't put you, your coworkers, or the company at risk. Since most of us liked our jobs and respected the store's owner, not the manager, we always went above and beyond. But I was on my way out, and after my talk with manager, I no longer cared. A few days later, manager comes out to let the supervisor know that a shipment of flowers will be arriving sometime today. He apparently decided to check up on me and was completely speechless when he saw me. There I was sitting on my register's counter reading a book. Manager, what on earth are you doing? Me, waiting for the next customer to come up while taking the weight off my foot, why? Manager, you know I could fire you for doing this, right? Me, my job is to be a cashier, which I'm doing whenever someone comes up. There are no additional duties like cleaning or stocking for the garden center cashier. So between customers, I'm taking the weight off my foot as per my doctor's note, minus the stool, of course. Manager, I could still fire you for reading on the sales floor. Me, please do. Since I've never received a warning or been written up, that would mean you were firing me for a first offense, which is not sufficient cause for the union. That would mean you would owe me five weeks severance, my unclaimed vacation time, and the pay I would miss between now and my final day. Now, you could also spend the next two weeks trying to catch me reading. That way, you could issue me the required three warnings, followed by the required three write-ups, but that would eat up a lot of your time, and I'm pretty sure I could have someone inside call to warn me if they see you coming this way. At this point, a man with a cart full of bags of dirt starts heading my way, and I hop off the register and onto my good foot, and hop around the register so I can serve him. Manager never came to see me again. The third story is, the tip's not right? Very well, let me correct it. Not a native English speaker, on a mobile. The story dates from last year. Some short backstory here. I'm French and I've been living in the US for a few months already at the time of this story. I was pretty much aware of the tipping policy in restaurants and I would always tip at least 15%, no matter how horrible the service was. So that day, I was going with 20 or so colleagues to an open bar event for my company in order to celebrate the visit of a colleague to our US office. This having been planned at the last minute and the ordinary place being already booked, we choose to book instead at a restaurant that I did not know but had somewhat decent reviews on Google and seemed very nice from the outside. The least I can say is that the service was subpar. The wait times were extremely long. The room we were placed in was isolated from the main area, so we basically had to go to the other area to call a waiter when we needed something. The drinks were on the cheap side, with extremely stingy servings on the cheapest alcohol you can imagine, and one server in particular was very lazy and rude. I'll skip the details, but it was not the best experience, and we chose never to come back to this restaurant again. Comes the check for a little over $1,000. I will be the one paying with my personal card and filling the paperwork the next day to be refunded by my company. Given the experience, the tip was set to the customary 15%, which I find generous in this specific case. I put the numbers and sign the slip, all done. Or I hope so. As we prepare to leave, the rude waiter approaches me and starts to school me on how 15% is disrespectful and how strangers like me should learn how to behave in the country, adding with a disrespectful tone that the French were as cheapskate as she thought. Needless to say that everybody could hear her ranting and was a bit speechless. What I never thought to be possible happened. She outright asked me to update the tip to a more adequate level of tipping for the service provided. Very well, I will definitely comply with that request. I politely apologize and ask for the receipt to correct it, which I do, changing my 15% to 0%. I take a picture of the receipt for my company paperwork. I then give her back the paper, apologizing that my initial tip was obviously not adequate for the service provided. She was on the verge of exploding at this point. We did leave. Although she was still loudly ranting at this point, I didn't pay attention, and we did leave. End of story. Or so I thought. A few days later, on Saturday, I noticed on my credit card account online that I was charged a 25% tip on top of the check. What was initially just an exceptionally bad experience changed to an outright fraud. First things first, I do immediately go to my bank in person to dispute the charge as unauthorized and provide the banker with a picture of the receipt with a 0% tip. He does write some of the story on his computer. On Monday, I go first thing to the restaurant to talk to a manager. 
This went uneventful, with the manager siding with her waitress, but nonetheless telling me that he will look into the issue and calling me back later. I insisted, but he was extremely rude also, and did not want to move a finger or believe me, keep saying that they are not in the business of credit card fraud, and adding that I should have came to them before filing a chargeback. I left eventually. One week later I do receive a call from my banker informing me that the restaurant has agreed to the chargeback and that the whole transaction has been reversed. I did expect only the tip to be refunded, resulting in the credit on my account being permanent. The next day I do receive a call from the restaurant owner directly, which was particularly apologetic. It seems that this waiter was new, but that similar incidents occurred since she's been hired. He kindly asked me if I could come back to the restaurant to receive a formal apology, which I agreed to do the next day. On that day, when I arrived, the manager did inform me that they did fire on the spot the waitress once the fraud was proven. He also did call the manager, who received me the first day, and asked him to apologize as well, which he reluctantly did. Finally, the owner told me that my next meal there will be on the house. I'll probably not eat there again given the food quality, but nonetheless thanked him for his honesty and for not fighting the charge back. End of story. For real that time. And the last story is, science teacher has a swear jar. I took a biology class my sophomore year in high school, and my teacher was pretty cool. She was laid back, funny, and didn't have your typical teacher vibe. She had set up a curse jar in the room, and the funds were used to pay for supplies. 25 cents if you swore, but one dollar if you dropped an F-bomb. One day we were doing some group work in tables, the ones with the Bunsen burner and the sink in the middle. Behind me was a kid that was particularly annoying and pretty talkative. Patrick was probably the type of kid who later went on to cure cancer, or create Minecraft. Smart kid, but he was basically a 17-year-old Martin from The Simpsons. Anywho, we're all trying to do our work, and Patrick is getting on my nerves. He keeps making loud, bad jokes and poking his head in on our project, telling us what we were doing wrong. I asked him twice to just worry about his own table, but the third time, I lost it. I walked up to the front of the class, pulled out my wallet, grabbed one dollar and put it on the teacher's desk, turned around and said quite loudly, Patrick, shut the F up! I walked back to my table and sat down. The entire class was silent and was staring at me and then the teacher. She looked down at the dollar bill on her desk and started laughing out loud. The rest of the class joined in and Patrick shrunk into his seat. The teacher then said, well, he paid his dollar. And that's the story of how I told a kid to STFU in class without getting into trouble. Thank you for watching. Bye.